Hey folks, Pastor Jim Thomas from the Village Chapel here in Nashville, Tennessee with your daily devotional. I want to read once again from Bringing Us to Glory. And uh, this is by Professor David Gooding. I wanted to read just a little bit from the back cover. Far from wanting us to live in a make-believe world, the call of God's word is to see the reality of what God is doing in the lives of millions of people. Scripture tells us that right now, he is working out his long-term plan for bringing many sons and daughters to full maturity in his son, Jesus Christ. The more we understand the revelation of his plan and the character of the one who has decided to bring us on a journey through this world of brokenness and beauty, the more we will be drawn to follow him in obedience, love, and trust, bringing us to glory. This uh, particular writing and uh, that I will read today for us uh, amplifies just a little bit from a passage uh, in, in Genesis chapter 1 that we recently studied uh, here at the Village Chapel, and it's uh, when God creates humanity. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Um, that focus is on uh, verse 26 there at the end of chapter one in Genesis. And here's what Professor Gooding has to say. The pinnacle and goal is man and he has made he was made to have dominion so let us consider that term for just a moment the word in hebrew uh, means not so much to have dominion as being a king politically it means to have dominion in the sense of being the one to organize administer run the place and develop it uh, i do admire the genius of god's inventions professor gooding says all the glorious fun that he purposed when he invented a universe and then made a man in his image to whom he could talk, a man who could respond to God and feel how God feels, think how God thinks, and take part with God in developing the thing. I love that. Great uh, way of thinking that, of course, is that we've been, we've been called to be uh, or created to be vice regents or stewards of what belongs to God. Uh, and so we have uh, been charged with creation care. Uh, again, it belongs to him, not to us. And so we do uh, take good care of it for his glory and because that's why he created us and we function well uh, in doing when we do that. So this is really uh, quite, quite amazing. And what, what he's pointing out here is that fellowship that God is, is desired uh, with, hum with the humanity that he has created so that uh, he could even give them the dignity of work and the participation uh, in his creation like he has. It's really powerful. Thus in the heavens and when, uh, thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. Uh, and on the seventh day, God finished his work that he had done and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. That from Genesis chapter two, uh, verses one and two. <clears throat> God didn't make it in its final form. There was still a lot to be done. The world still had to be developed. God subsequently planted a garden uh, the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and to keep it. That's from verse uh, 15 of chapter 2. I think that's lovely, says Professor Gooding. God didn't put man in a world that was finished to the last crossing of the T and dotting of the I. He left something for man to do and to develop. And isn't that wonderful um, that God would do that again, uh, giving us uh, the responsibility that comes with that privilege of being created in his image, but the responsibility uh, as one's created in his image to share uh, in the stewardship of God's creation. Really powerful. Um, I don't know what your father was like, Professor Gooding says, when he gave you presents, a bicycle maybe, or a toy train or whatever. I can distinctly remember that it was usually some older person 
who would give you a train. <laughs> the adult wanted to show you how it should be done. So he hitched the engine up. He even wanted to show you how the signals went and how they worked. As the evening went by, you hadn't been allowed to do anything the adult had done at all. And uh, I suppose he has some memory like that. Um, I, I never really had a train that I can remember. Bicycle, yes. Uh, usually already put together uh, by my mom, who would stay up very, very late on, on Christmas Eve and, and put together whatever needed to be put together so that we would have a great Christmas gift. Um, so, so wonderful. But sometimes adults just do it all themselves because they don't have the patience to wait for uh, the younger ones uh, who don't have the experience or the knowledge or the skill for, for them to participate and to do it right and that sort of thing. And so uh, he says, I'm glad that God isn't like that, Professor Gooding says, and I, and I agree with him. God invented a big world for humanity, put him on it and said, Adam, you develop it. So God has packed this world with all sorts of surprises to keep man interested and entertained. <laughs> That's so true. Uh, how are you interested and how are you entertained by God's creation? Oh, the ways are myriad. I mean, there's so many. Um, I've been talking about getting a, a telescope and I'm quite entertained by looking up into the heavens. And uh, it's, it's fascinating to me that we can, with our naked eye, we can see a star so far away as Arcturus or Antares, uh, and, and yeah, I'm, I'm impressed with the moon as well. And, and the fact that you can, you can see, uh, that the texture on the surface of the moon, that's really, uh, quite entertaining, isn't it? Quite, quite thrilling to see what God has done in his creation, but you can look the other way as well. Look into the sea, or you can look into the human person and, and, and the, just all the uh, amazing, uh, detail with which God has created his creation. Just fascinating uh, to explore all of that. God has packed his world with all sorts of surprises to keep us interested and entertained. On that physical level in doing things with God, man might then grow up and get to know God, just as a child grows up and gets to know his father, and advance into those deeper spiritual lessons and get to know God on that highest of all levels. So even the, the science that we do uh, with the human body, the, 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 you know, the medical science, the, the looking up into the heavens, the astronomy, um, uh, all of that work, uh, the uh, fascinating exploration of the ocean. And I don't know if you've ever seen some of those television shows that uh, explore nature, uh, the planet Earth. They just continue to speak of God's glory. And uh, he designed all of this for us to enjoy. And he designed all of these things to, as Psalm 19, one says, to declare the glory of God. And you and I were created with the capacity to be blown away by glory, to, to not only see it, but to experience it in such a way that it draws us to, to, to the one that it all points to. See, they're signs. They're not the point, but they point to the point. And Jesus is the point. So let's look to him. Let's, let's be fascinated with his creation. Let's enjoy his creation. Let's help care for his creation. But let's worship our creator. Amen. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to be fascinated, to be astonished, to be in awe of the mountains, the ocean, the heavens, uh, the human person, the, the, the fact that there are other minds and other personalities on this planet, and each of us a unique sentient creature bearing your image, Lord. How fascinating, how wonderful, how mind-blowing. Send us out into the world today, Lord, whether that be on, you know, some electronic media or whether it be physically out walking the neighborhood or 
whatever it might be. But Lord, let us see everyone we encounter as an image bearer, someone who you've created. And Lord, help us to be, uh, be caregivers or take care of the creation you've entrusted uh, into our stewardship, Lord. We bless you. We praise you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Daily Devotions with Pastor Jim Thomas is a resource of the Village Chapel in Nashville, Tennessee. If you find this daily devotional beneficial, leave a review and share it with friends and family. For more resources or to support our ministry, visit our website, thevillagechapel.com. Artwork for this podcast by Kim Thomas. Music by Phil Kagey.